customer and employee experience. It's the foundation of your business success. So how can technologies like AI and machine learning help your organization to improve the customer and the employee experience at scale? Dmitry Krakowski, he's the Chief Product Officer at Unit4, and he's here to talk about all the ins and outs about how to improve the customer and the employee experience now, but also in the future. Welcome, Dimitri. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, we see that organizations are under tremendous pressure to continuously improve the customer experience. So what innovations in AI do you see that will have a substantial positive impact on the customer experience? Well, there's a, there, there are a few things here that, that they're going on at the same time, which I think are very, very useful. First is probably the introduction of natural language processing into the, into the user experience. So uh, we communicate with these systems in very different ways from how we used to do it before. In the past, you might have to log into software, you have to navigate, you have to find the right screen, um, and then you have to record something in the system. What we see more and more is the ability to communicate with the system, A, without going there, and B, using the, the standard, standard tools that we use in our everyday lives, whether it's Microsoft Teams, Slack, Skype, whatever other messaging uh, tools that one might use, to, to essentially have a dialogue with the system, where in the middle, there is a, there is a digital assistant, which is ML-powered digital assistant, that who that understands the language employees speak that is able to translate this into the actions into into the you know financials or HR or whatever other you know system connect these two worlds with each other reflect them as transactions while presenting the user experience to to the end user that sounds like a dialogue so that's that's very that's very important and I think that's that that's creating a very very different approach you know to, to how we interact with these systems. Secondly, I, I see a lot of automation in, in finding meaning and patterns in the data, whether it's a fraud detection, anomaly detection, or any other patterns that, 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 are, that are out of band. That in the past, we would have people with very, very specialized expertise having to look for these patterns, analyze these patterns, flag the patterns, and do something about this. That's where computers and machine learning specifically is really good at that. You know, finding things that do not look right. And it's not always that they're fraudulent, but they, they're, there's a certain probability that these things may be out of, out of pattern and flagging them to humans to then do perhaps you know, the, a manual check. This really, really saves time and finds a lot more, many more of those patterns that ordinarily would be very, very hard or labor intensive to do if done with humans in a typical way. Yeah. Great examples. So, so what we see is that the pandemic has accelerated the need to improve the customer and the employee experience. So what are the key trends that you have seen and how can this uh, technology such as AI and machine learning help to capitalize on these trends? I think one of the trends is similar to what I mentioned is pushing interaction to the edge. Again, not bringing user to the system, but pushing the system or little fragments of the system, financials, HR, procurement, whatever the case might be, to the edge, to where the user is, to in, into the context of where they do the daily work. Again, into the messaging uh, applications they might use or, or any other application they use every day. You know, again, to the phone, um, in small fragments where a lot of these interactions these days are very short, literally 10 seconds. You know, user gets in, user gets out, they do something and they go on with the, with the daily life. And to achieve this, the system needs to be very, very smart about not showing you a big long form with a lot of fields, but being clever and understanding who you are as a user what is, the con what, what is the context in which you're using the system? Where are you using it? What device? Isolating this little fragment and pushing this fragment to you, whether creating sort of an on-the-fly little, little very specialized experience or, again, you know, interacting with you through, through natural language assistant, through natural language processing. Um, and, you know, that requires a degree of understanding, degree of personalization, and then using this different alternative interfaces like, like natural language or voice uh, to, to interact with the users. So I think that's becoming much, much more of a trend 
that we see in, in the applications. The core applications still do what they used to do. They record transactions, they, they, they enable workflows, but many, many more users interact with them now and then interact with them in this few really lightweight ways, fast, personalized, very specific. And we were talking about employee experience. So can you provide some practical examples how AI machine learning is, is helping to improve this specific domain? Yes, there are many examples. Uh, let, me, let me use some of the examples from our system. But uh, of course, as, an in, as, as this industry, we're really moving in this direction. And that is, as I said, creating very small, very specific interactions with the system. In, 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 in our case, sometimes it's using digital assistant. We have a customer that's using our digital assistant you know, for all of their employees. And they, they see tremendous uptick in, in, in using it this way. And that is, you know, little things, you know, I want to submit a vacation request, or I want to submit my timesheet from the time worked on a particular project, or I want to, to, to ask a question about company policies, you know, for instance, with regard to certain things, expenses. So instead of, again, going to the system, logging in, going to the menu, navigating to some area, or sometimes they actually don't know where to go, or searching through this, they could just say, hey, um, you know, I want to submit a, a, a vacation request. And the system would be smart enough to know who you are, where you are, and what country, what are the policies of the, of the company, and ask you some follow-up questions. You know, is this, you know, a vacation, or is it a sick leave, or is it something else? You know, how many days, when is it going to start? You know, in this sort of a quick question and answer form. You know, you submit the request and off you go, you're done without having ha without ever having to actually go into sort of a traditional, you know, web system. You could do it on your phone, you could do it, you know, on the train or in line, or when you have, you know, extra three, four, five minutes, or sometimes even a lot less to do that. So that's 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 a very common thing that 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 where you know AI and sort of combination of these different AI technologies, you sort of start dissecting this. There's a natural language processing. There's personalization. You know, there's contextual understanding. You know, combining this all into the experience and then, you know, connecting user and the system, you know, through this experience using sort of many of those layers of AI ML technologies that ultimately creates the experience for users that's very different from, from how it was in the past. So organization complexity is, is increasing and it's getting harder and harder. So how can organizations apply AI machine learning and to scale and to grow and in the same time manage these complexities? So I think a big part of starting to use machine learning technologies is um, really understand and start standardizing the data. You know, ultimately machine learning, you know, works when the, when the data is organized in a certain way. When there's a, you know taxonomy, there's data normalization. So the same things mean you know the same things in different contexts. So having a data strategy in place is very very important. You know companies need to kind of organize the data, put it together, you know, and then start using technologies, machine learning technologies on on, on top of this data. I think another very important element is really applying them to the right problems. Sometimes in the past, particularly, you know, as, as machine learning technology started entering enterprise software, it was a little bit of a hammer looking for a nail. You know, we want to do machine learning, you know, and we'll just sort of force the problem into, into, into a solution. And so being very clear about what is the business value, how does um, machine learning, you know, help solving this, this business problem? Finding problems that are solvable with machine learning um, is, is, is something that's important. For instance, I'll give you an example. In the past, I heard, you know, something like, you know, using machine learning for, you know, for attrition prediction. So predicting when employees are going to leave. And that always struck me as a little bit strange because, you know, so, so I, I was missing the so what? That you're only going to do good things for people are, who are just about to leave. Why not do them for everybody? Right. Versus there are other problems that I felt like very, very useful. You know, again, as I said, the interactions with the system, the breaking sort of them into sort of this really lightweight experiences 
or understanding the patterns in the data. We, we see things like, you know, as I said, fraud or anomaly detection, or just automating a lot of, or, or a lot of data entry. That's, that's another area where there's a bit, there are big, big breakthroughs in, you know, using machine learning where, you know, instead of having people type in a lot of data, whether it's, you know, retyping the invoice or mapping invoices to certain accounts or, or analyzing expenses, you know, using machine learning, you could sort of almost automate it completely where you could, you know, scan the forms, do OCR on the form, map it to the right accounts and do it all more or less automatically. Yeah, great series of examples. Thank you, Dimitri, for sharing some great examples and insights. And for the audience, thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.